Well, I'll tell you, it's funny you bring it up because I don't do cycling or ride a bike, but someone brought it to my attention that they have electric bikes or maybe bikes that ride themselves. And this got me thinking, you know, maybe I can do like a, a, a marathon or a, a cycle race or whatever the bike people do, you know, with like a bright green shirt or something. I mean, I don't even have to be on it if it's autonomous and it's just riding itself. But, you know, uh, you know, we have options, I think, is, is the good is the good thing here. Steve Wunner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about Windows device attestation. Intune now has some great reporting and ways we can filter devices based on attestation. If you have no idea what attestation is, even more the reason to uh, you know stick around and watch this. It's important. Yeah. However, we can we can go into some kind of cycle marathon thing. I just I don't want to ride a bike, so we just have to work around that. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so in order to get started with device health attestation and Intune, let's start with something very basic. What is device attestation, you know, when we look at it? Um, device attestation is the status of basically the overall integrity of a PC. And there's a few components to this, so let's lay them out. Okay, so device attestation is generally derived from these components, the BIOS or the UEFI of the device, um, the actual TPM chip on a PC, and of course the boot software. So between these, there's a few different things that you know can be looked at in order to get the state of a device. And you've probably seen a lot of these before. So these are things like, let's just call them out here, BitLocker, right? BitLocker to, can encrypt the drive and make sure the key is stored in the TPM and that we're protecting the OS volumes and the data volumes, things like that. Secure Boot is another one. And most likely you've seen these even in like compliance policies and things because it's kind of all related. Secure Boot is kind of related to this, right? It makes sure that the, um, the actual boot order of the software like as Windows is going through and make sure that it's only booting into software that's trusted by the PC at the firmware level. Another piece is code integrity. Code integrity basically ensures that every time a driver or system file is loaded, um, its integrity is validated, right, by the OS. And this is done with like virtual base protection, um, you know, different security tools. There's early launch, uh, anti-malware type platforms, but the overall gist of it is, you know, is, are all the files and things we're loading in legitimate? So that covers what attestation is. High level, right? We can go into this topic, you know, you can get very deep very quickly, but I'm trying to keep it, uh, keep it fairly straightforward. So now that we know what attestation is, right, uh, how can we monitor the health of the attestation and how does that work within two? So to talk about the flow of what happens, let's look at an autopilot PC, right? So autopilot PC boots and immediately uh, establishes a trust with enter ID. So once the enter ID trust exists, we begin the Intune enrollment. Now during Intune enrollment, Intune will send the device back a security token. Okay, so now with that token, the device will attempt to get an enrollment certificate from Intune. Now we've talked about this cert before, right? This is the cert you see that has the Intune um, MDM device CA issuer, right? So we've, we've seen that before, especially when we have to remove it for our migrations. Now finally, once we're enrolled, what happens is Intune will attempt to collect the attestation state of the device, right? So, so at that, at the final point here, the TPM attestation request is made to the device from Intune, and then that data is sent back up, right? So this way we can validate, you know, once we know there's enrollment, once the cert's been issued, um, and again, that's all stored in the TPM, uh, we have to check for device attestation and that's what Intune's doing. Now device attestation is required 
for certain workflows, right? So one of them is autopilot pre-provisioning, formerly known as white glove, right? Uh, the other is autopilot self-deploy. And the reason this is so important is because there is no user login or validation. So think about normal user-driven autopilot, right? You sign into the device, the device has to be registered. So TPM attestation isn't necessarily required, right? Um, in order to proceed with that because there's a user element. When you take the user element away, the device in order to remain secure can only rely on the integrity of the device. So Intune's not gonna enroll something um, that we at least can't do a TPM attestation on. A TPM attestation is just one part of it, but that's what's primarily used during the provisioning. All right, so what does this have to do with uh, Intune and what are some of the things we can do with it? So if we go to Intune, we're going to go to Reports, and this is a preview feature. You can see Device Attestation Preview. Essentially, what happens here is I have a few different states my devices are in. Um, so I have many that have not started to try to do the attestation request. I have some failed ones, and we can take a look at that. And then I have, of course, a device that succeeded. Now, some other ones, you know, something could be in progress, but you'll see I have a few failed, all right? So why would a device fail at a station? Well, the good news is this report allows us to see that now, right? So AIK certificate was not provided by the client. What's that mean? So the AIK certificate also stands for the attestation identity key. This is the certificate um, that basically identifies the TPM. All right, so now we know that you know, we can check for attestation. We have the report here. You know, why is this important um, and, and what does it matter? It matters because we can set up filters based on this. So once we're going through and we're determining we have like critical assets, maybe in conditional access we want to protect or we have apps we only want to deploy to devices that we verified that on, we can come in here and go to filters. So I can create a new filter and I can say uh, Windows, TPM at a station and we will say property, right? What do we have here? I don't see anything here. Well, that's because it's a manual rule at the moment. So I'm going to say device. This is a new attribute is TPM attested equals true. And if I preview this, take a look, it already caught the one device I have that went through and had successful uh, TPM attestation. So I can save this filter. And now when I eventually go deploy a policy or an app, I can put the filter on that. So for example, if I have a very critical app, um, I'm just gonna say AWS tools for Windows. I don't really use that, but let's say I wanted to assign that. I can edit my assignment and I can say it's available for enrolled devices, but we're gonna use the included filter. So that has to match. Okay, so that means only that one device is gonna get it because it has TPM attestation. This is a great add-on from uh, you know, that that's available in Intune now. Uh, once we get more towards these, you know, zero trust models and we're protecting everything at the transaction, right? The user accessing the resource on what kind of device. This is just another way we can evaluate uh, the state of a device, right? Certs from cloud, PKI, uh, compliance state, but really ensuring that it, it went through the health attestation successfully. And uh, you can see I have a lot of devices that weren't. So it's a good opportunity for me to have visibility to possibly clean those up. So um, there's a lot to health attestation. Hopefully this helps you get started and we'll be seeing you.